the things I wanted to keep in mind here, as you can see, I've got a couple of dummy valves in there now. What I'm doing, valve job and all that stuff's done, but, you know, where I epoxy the heads, put the tubes in and everything, one thing I like to do is just take a wire brush and just kind of roll over the combustion chamber with a little bit smaller valve. This is actually like a 188 valve and a 1450 just a little bit where it's barely covering the seat and I go in here <laughs> touch off on it I'll go back in there I got them all done and I'll go back in there with uh, my uh, cross buff and touch them that's just to get any epoxy off and if there's any lines or any kind of edges anywhere on anything it just rubs uh, barely touches it to get any edges off just to assure that I got a good clean chamber so I'll go back in here one final time hit it with the cross buff and then we're ready for the table we got some CC in to do okay Although we did hand home the guides and got all that straight, one thing I do at the very end, it's not really so much for a cleaning purpose, is this right here is a dingleberry brush. And what I do is I just take me a shot of WD-40 or something down in the guide hole. Um, and all I'm going to do is take it and run a quick pass through it. Okay, and what that does, it, it, it like puts a little baby cross hatch a little bit better than the guide and it also enables me to take a look and say, hey, you know, uh, how does the valve feel uh, in there? It, it's a cleaner, but I've always loved the little dingleberry home brushes because of the pretty finish and like I said, it gives it a little bit of a little baby cross hatch on it. It don't remove hardly any material, so it don't hurt anything. But man, does it make it really nice there at the end. So, I just want to show you that little trick. These are from a company called BRM, Brush Research Management. They're fairly cheap, you know, 10 or 12 bucks for one of these. It just makes a really nice difference on finish, putting a finishing touch on it, okay? Another thing in the final stages, as I take and go through every bolt hole on the cylinder head, even the spark plugs, uh, where the glass beads have cleaned the head or what have you, sometimes it might get just a little bit tight. So I just take the chaser, run it all the way down till it touches the outer aluminum, and pull it out. There is absolutely nothing, no aggravating, than getting a new head and have bolt holes that won't work. So every bolt hole needs to be chased and threaded from the spark plug hole to the exhaust ports and intakes, even the outside bolt holes on the head. So every one of them gets chased and cleaned up. That way you know that some stupid problem like this won't happen to you because I can't tell you how many times through the years I've seen cylinder head shops go in and do a $2,000 job on a set of heads to get them on there and have to bring them back and have a bolt hole helicoil or thread. This stuff takes time and the time keeps adding up, but it's better to go ahead and do it right the first time so that when it goes out the door, you don't see it again rather than have it come back because you missed something so insignificant as this. Anyway, I just wanted to show you how we go through them all and clean all the threads, especially the spark plug holes. Make sure all that's cleaned out. One of the other things I do, whenever I send a head out, when it's in the bag, I go ahead and put um, anti-seize in the spark plug hole. Some I used to put them everywhere, but mainly the what I'm concerned about is the spark plug hole. So when they get them, you ain't got to worry about somebody putting them on there and forgetting to do that. It's already in when they screw it in, it's done. 
Okay, now we'll get to the CC and other port. The okay, here we are. All the work's done. I'm doing my final verification. I'm going to CC a combustion chamber, CC an intake port, and CC an exhaust port. Let's see what we got. I removed quite a bit of material from the combustion chamber trying to acquire the shape and straightened out a lot of bad points on it. If I had to say off the top of my hand, I'd say about 68 to 69 cc's. But this is the LT1 head. I don't know what they were to start with. Wait a minute, here we go. Wow. Shiver me timbers. Got me a bubble. Well, I guess I was wrong. I'm looking at fifty six point six. Fifty six point six on the chambers. I don't know if you can see that I'm looking at it but 56.6 on the combustion chamber cc volume let's go to the intake port 100 cc's of water in it it takes two times this is a 100 cc barrette so this should be the last one I know I ain't gonna be over 200 in here remember that when we began this adventure it started life as 170 cc's now let's see what the finished product is. All right, we're on the ball. This is the real way of measurement when you're comparing course flow bench numbers. I'm not taking anything away from them, but I'm more of a cross-sectional area and volume guy and wet flow guy than I am a flow bench. All right, this is getting interesting. Very interesting. All right, pal, we've crossed the 170 mark, 175, 180, 185. Talk to me, baby, 190. Oh, Lord, mercy, yes, 197. All right, read them and weep, buddy. 197 cc's. This is one terrible son of a gun right here. All right, we'll go on next to the exhaust port, and by then we'll be able to figure the math out and see what we got. I really like those numbers right there. I figured it would be 185 to 190, but I guess I really raised that roof to the outer limits. All right, off for right now. Okay, we're about there on the exhaust. It's a shame I didn't CC these stock. Alright, looks like 72 cc's right on the money. Try to give you a close up. 72 cc's on the exhaust port. So now we have the numbers and I can take my blueprint of the head and the chart and do the math and get some real numbers here on horsepower figures. Okay. <coughs> I can't believe it. I'm uh, quite beside myself here. <laughs> I knew it was going to be something special when the cross-sectional area, when I got a 1-500 roof, and the bowls and straightening out that roof, that curvature. And as you can see, I, I see, I still got a little slant. I can't even talk. <laughs> but it just absolutely is to die for. Uh, doing this with a 194 valve, that's the main thing. I mean, I'm sitting here looking at the port, and it is straight port all the way back, cross sectionally wise from the entrance right here all the way to the bowl, I'm not varying probably 10% difference. And I'm not going into the math on it right now, but that the, 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 the rate of 
expansion like a divergent duck is absolutely to die for. It slowly begins its transition, makes the turn and exiting out, and the RPM range and the camshaft that this guy's got, although it's more of a nitrous cam, it still ought to work really good. I'm, wow, I'm really happy with it. This turned out better than what I thought it was. I'm, so anyway, we'll go on. The last thing I do is pressure test the head and I do that with a plate. I'll show you my plate set up and then we'll go on to final assembly setting the springs and Tommy's are on your way to you and I'm telling you, you couldn't ask for something better. I'll put my 197 up against AFRs or Elder Brocks or Brodexes any day of the week, buddy. Mine's with a 194 valve. They ain't passing the hair I am and they got the big 202s or 205s in them. Rock and roll them. Okay. I was getting ready to take this apart and I got in a hurry. I was going to show you the process, but this is my pressure testing kit. This is for doing cylinder heads where instead of having the big bench table, this lets you get down and spray in areas a lot better than that. And also, this is what I use to do what's called pumping, which you can see some of my videos on that. My air hose plugs in here, I have my pressure regulator, I turn, it goes from zero to 60 pounds. I just pressure tested both of these heads and I pulled it all the way to the maximum reading at 60 pounds and then I squirt dishwashing fluid all inside the ports and see if I see any bubbles. This thing passed with flying colors. It has a quick connect here that connects and disconnects where the water passage is. So right now, I know that I did a leak test on the valves, used the seat runout gauge on them, pressure tested the head to 60 pounds, spraying dishwashing fluid. This head has passed every inspection, every test, three times over. With a runner volume of 197 cc's, that kind of, that wakes you up because that means I hit it 27 cc's hard over what it was stock. And I just like to see it, but it's 100%. So off they go. I will show you one last time when I'm assembling the heads, uh, the springs he's using the layout and the intake manifold. The intake manifold is over here. The raw material's all been removed. So uh, these will leave in the morning UPS back to their destination, pressure tested, valve leak tested, every trick I know to do to them, and not a bad price for the job. All you machine shop wannabes out there, eat your heart out, buddy. All right, Headbot signing off.